Welcome to Sports and Hip Hop with DJ Mad Max here. We are welcomed by the guest that we have here tonight, Lil Haiti, coming all the way from Brooklyn. Yes, sir. It's your boy Lil Haiti. We're here, man. We're connecting. <laughs> That's right. How you feeling about your new EP? I feel great, man. The EP is doing amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I've been working hard, so I had to give them something real quick before the summer begins and get back to work. You hear what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm definitely uh, getting a lot of great feedbacks. Um, I'm getting exactly what I expected because that's how I felt about the EP too. When I first recorded it, I was like, oh, this shit is so hard. <laughs> and everybody else that I heard the, the EP, they were just saying like, you know, they're not skipping any songs and oh. looks like it looks like they're rocking out. Mm -hmm. Slide where the cap at, Poland Spring, you got some bangers on there. Exactly, exactly. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How did you connect yeah. with Flip the Narrow? Uh, me and Flip actually got together um, when uh, we got mutual friends, and we just connected that. You know, he's a zoo just like me. He uh, he heard the record. Actually, the record was actually recorded before Flip. Like the record was actually done completely, wow. and he he heard it and he fell in love with it. And then you know he wanted to hop on it. We made it happen. You were in the studio yeah. when you guys did that, or because of COVID, it's more no. of sending it through the email. No, actually, nah. We sent it through the email. You mm -hmm. know. I had already recorded the song, so it was sent to to one of my peoples that knows him personally, and then you know they, they he liked it. You know what I'm saying? You can't really force people to to hop on things they don't like. You feel me? So, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so he, he wouldn't he sound heard good. Exactly, he heard it, and you could tell there's a chemistry. Like the minute you heard his verse, it kind of felt like we were actually in the studio together. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah. You can hear it. The EP's doing numbers. Where the cap at? It's a flip the narrow. Go check that out on all platforms off the new EP, of course. I want to get into the beginning of you. You were born in Haiti. Then you eventually moved over to Brooklyn. So what was your story of growing up in Haiti, then moving over to Brooklyn? Because that's a really interesting story. I mean, you know, growing up in Haiti, you know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't easy for everybody else. But, you know, I was fortunate enough to have um, my father that was doing really good for himself to kind of like, you know, give me a better life. Um, you know, being out there was tough, but, you know, we, we made it work. We made it happen. And like I said, my father was strong enough to, to push through. And, you know, because of him, I'm who I am today. Like, this is who I learned from. I was able to help the less fortunate while I was in Haiti, like a small kid, giving back to the people that I didn't have because I had it because my father made it possible to provide to me. So, you know, I wasn't being selfish. I was blessed. So I decided to bless other people. You know, the, the, the transition was a little um, hard coming here. You, you dress different, you talk different, you walk different because you're not used, you're not accustomed to the, to the, to this type of lifestyle yet. Yeah. So, you know, we would get picked on, I would get picked on, but, after a while, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because you're not familiar with the language, you're not familiar with the with the people and what they're about. So it was a little scary sight, but as you get a little familiar, they know not to play with you because you I I I've been had that in me. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. It's just, you know, when you walk into a home or somebody, you gotta have some respect. So, you know, after just watching and you know, being alert, and I noticed. This guy's is not about nothing. So, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I handle my business and then, you know, that's why I call myself the big zone. You know what I'm saying? Cause we used to go back to other schools where other kids was going through the same thing I was going through. And then, you know, we put peace like, yo, you're not going to touch him. You touch him, this ain't going to happen. We all pull up and then we all, it wasn't a gang. It was more like, you know what I'm saying? A family that protect each other because, you know, we don't speak the language. So you're going to get picked on call all type of name, Haitian booty scratcher, whatever that it is. Haitian, you stink, blah, blah, blah. You know, it was nothing like that. So, you know, we learned to, to take it in and, and create a bond with the other people that was going through it. And then we, we stand together and then it just don't happen again. You know? You also started your own carnival band while you were in Haiti, which is interesting. I, love, I would love to hear that story, how that came about. Man, I was really young, man. I was probably like five years old. I had my own band. So I had all the folks that was probably like 15, 16, 17, 18, 20 years old around me. But I had the brand and the sound, what I wanted it to sound like. So I would sing it out and play. And then they like go along with it. So of course, I'm 
I'm young, so they're going to take it and run with it. But I was the leader because I, I had the creative mind of how things would go, how it would sound like, and they just follow my lead, you know? That's interesting. Yeah, I never yeah. hear that before. Like, I've never had an artist on my show that's created a band, especially at the young age that you did, and then going on to your later life and moving on into Brooklyn, you eventually started producing your own music. Exactly. To this day, I actually... Maybe a couple months back, my older cousin hit me up and sent me the band. Like, yo, it's, they still playing with older kids that had no idea how it started or kids that's growing now. And then he's like, yo, listen, that's the band you created, bro. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. It's still there. And then it was just like, and I didn't know how to take it as in like, yo, you've been really about that life. I just didn't see that until now that's interesting just think that you were always involved in the music scene from an early age you were originally you kind of wanted when you were starting out you wanted to be more into the r&b scene yeah you know i started as a producer for the people that don't know i was always into the r&b scene because um you know i was a ladies man growing up <laughs> i love the ladies so you 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 find R&B music to sing along to, to the girls, to, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like cute shit, little things to kind of get their attention. So that's what I was using. Um, R&B was something that I loved a lot, or I still love too, because that's my, that's my getaway. Cause the melody, you don't got to understand the language of the music for it to touch you. It takes you somewhere else. So, you know, that's what I was into. Yeah. Curious to hear because I know, of course, Jay Z and Biggie, sure, there's a big inspiration to you and hip hop going yeah. to Brooklyn. Who are those R&B artists that you looked up to when you were younger? Oh yeah, definitely. We got Boys to Men. We got mm -hmm. One Twelve. We got uh, Joe C. We got um, I like Craig David, um, Soul Child. Man, it's a lot. The list could go on. We got, of course, um, Usher. I was really rocking with Usher. I was really rocking, uh, rocking with Tyrese. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot, man. Um, Casey and JoJo. Listen, the <laughs> list goes on. Now, don't ask me about their songs because I just be vibing. I know some of the songs. I might play some songs for you. You'd be like, whoa, Haiti, what the hell? Yeah, I'm into this shit, type of shit. Like, I would listen to more R&B than hip hop music because <laughs> it, it talked to me more. You know what I'm saying? I was a ladies man all over the school. So that talked to me. I didn't, I, I, listen, that gangster shit, I, I didn't really care about it. But I hold my own if I need to hold my own because that's what it is, you know? How do you feel about how R&B has changed from when you started listening to it? Let's say the Casey and JoJo, Boys to Men era to all the way now. I feel the pop has always been changing since the beginning of time. It started out with the party and then the DJs. Hip hop has always been subject to change, but R&B, it's changed in so many ways where it's not the raw vocals as much and people may not get that same feeling because it's more auto tune -y. It's different. I mean, is there still R&B? Or mm. I, mean, I, I don't know how to feel about that because I don't think there's still R&B music. I mean, shout out to the guys like Chris Brown that try to go in and as, as Chris Brown still don't make R&B music. I mean, let's be honest. All right. You, you get what I'm saying? But we still appreciate those guys still going. But honestly, there's no R&B music, man. It's, it's a vibe. I want to call it a vibe because it have changed from we're not expecting for everything to stay the same. We expect for things to, to, uh, to shift. But it's, it's, it's so unfortunate to see how R&B just went diving very low and it's like it doesn't even exist yeah um but you know people like myself go back and recycle and listen to those music because those allow me to create my melody i mean i do r&b music but they create it allowed me to create my melody and a lot of the guys too that does what they do now they go back to those music to create their melody mm -hmm. to be honest with you you know they're not going to say it but i'm still bumping to I'm still bumping to 112. You know what I'm saying? I'm still chilling. Yeah, when I'm, I'm going for a long drive. I'm still listening to this type of music to put me back, to bring me back. You know what I'm saying? Because the creative time around that time was, was that era where you had a lot of fun. It was more about on the block, 
the nicest, the flashiest. We got the baddest girl that looks cute, and you're still trying to bad. You're still trying to put up a front. You know what I'm saying? But not you could get, and it was hard to get those girls. Mm-hmm. You didn't know how they look like. You didn't know how their bottom looked like. You didn't know how anything on their body part looked like. So you shooting your shot like crazy, like. <laughs> You ain't even know how to dance. You become a dancer, but now it's on social media. So everything just going along, you know, long story, man. But you could tell like R&B created a lot of movement and it makes you feel like you're that fly guy. You know what I'm saying? Right now, there's no fly guy. A lot of guys just going off emotion, man. That's not fly. No. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? R&B, I feel like as far as hip hop making people, this narrative of making you feel gangster, Half of the half of the hip hop artists that was like that have a soft spot. They're mama's boy, and the R and B dudes, they the ladies man, but they're really about that life. Yeah, they just choose I know what that you mean. path. Yeah, that R and B guys, they're really about that life, and the the gangster guys be the soft ones. And it's like, yo, hmm, interesting. But you know, like I said, a, a lot have changed. R and B around that time used to be the vibe that makes you. It was hard to get the girls, but it was, it, you had a way to do it, but now it's like, there's no, ain't no hard, it's there. As long as you have the money, I guess you can buy it. <laughs> Since we're on the subject of R&B, even though you say that it may not be in existence, as well as I agree with you on that, because it's changed yeah. so much. Is there any artists that you're looking for out there that still have that same sound and tap into those raw vocals that you would want to collaborate collaborate with on a future album? I definitely, man. Chris Brown definitely have a, you know, I feel like R and B has been gone, but Chris Brown's still there. Like vocal, he's a he's like a real vocalist. Like he's really about that. You know what I'm saying? That's someone that I would definitely talk work with. I mean, I'm not an R and B singer or nothing like that, but I would appreciate it. It would feel different. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that's the only one that I could think of from before. Uh, once Chris Brown came in, everything started shifting. But you could tell they were a connection still. And you could find it's like looking for love. And and you can't go there, but you could you could kind of like cheat over there a little bit. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? But there's nowhere else. So Chris Brown will be it. I I don't think there's anybody else. Maybe I may be wrong. I'm not tapped in, but that's why I'm gonna leave it at. Mm-hmm. I, I could only speak on what I know and what I feel. And that's my opinion. Everybody has got their own. If there's somebody else out there that's doing it. Congrats, keep going, keep pushing, man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly right. Dr. Dre and Timbaland were the producers that you looked up to when you were younger. If you had the chance to work with them in the studio, what would you cook up, you think? Why would I, well, why would I cook up, man? Let's, let's, the question is how many songs would I cook up? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know what I'm saying, man? I would probably never leave the studio, man. Like I'll probably never sleep (laughs) Um, because these guys are, the reason why I, I I started music, okay? Like the reason why, not because I started music, because I started music when I was five. I didn't know about them, but really took it serious to become a producer because like these guys, I was watching them on YouTube. Like when Timberland would be in the studio with Jay-Z, like cooking fresh and it's, it was a vibe, you feel me? And it was just something that I always wanted to be part of. You know, uh, we got Timberland, we got uh, uh, Kanye West, of course. Love his story of how he how he started. Uh, Dr. Dre, I had Dog Child was my favorite too. Um, Ryan Leslie, I was a big fan of those two, Timberland and Ryan Leslie, because the way they created their music, it was so raw. Everything was being made, not just that. Like it, the instrument was really made playing live. It wasn't no computerized or nothing, no, no computer program or nothing. If you know about Ryan Leslie, you know. He will order this saxophone from wherever in a whole different other country and play it like it was real. These are the things that I enjoy. Like the new production, it is what it is. Like I said, things are changing, so you got to go along with it. You know what I'm saying? But definitely I will cook a lot. Because by myself, I record like six songs a day on my bad day. So oh. imagine sitting down with these guys that does this for real, for real. I'm not leaving. No. I'm not sleeping either. <laughs> no, nah, for real. Give me some. I believe it. Give me some. I don't know. Give me something to stay up or whatever that it is. I'm not sleeping, bro, because this is a 
This, this is legendary. I wouldn't want to miss not even 1.1 second of it. My phone would be down. I don't usually put my phone down. I'll be writing like on a notepad because I usually use my phone. I don't want to miss anything. I don't want people to call me, text going, nothing. Focus. You know what I mean? But these are the guys that I, I would hope one day that I could tap in with and work with because um, I appreciate them, what they have done for the culture. I appreciate them for Missy Elliott, listening to Timberland with Missy Elliott, cooking up with uh, uh, Justin Timberlake with Missy Elliott, uh, not Missy, uh, how you call her? Um, What's her name? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. You get what I'm saying, bro? Like, man, I could go on, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Legendary tracks with legendary artists right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're the reason why I'm who I am today, man. I really started as a producer and I said, you know what? Let me rap because people wasn't really gravitating to my music. Mm -hmm. You were you know sending you were sending rappers beats and other musicians beats and, and yeah. they weren't feeling it, but you were. They were feeling it, but it's just the, what I was getting from them on a the, on the music tip, it, it was no connection. Okay, it was the connection so, part. Yeah, so I decided to to do what I have to do and connect with me and my music, and it went. It went. Mm -hmm. And then I fell back and started using other people's production, but you know. That's how it always happened. Did, yeah. did, was there any of your production on this new EP, The Big Zoe? No, actually, I didn't, you know, since, you know, I'm a handful. I got two kids. I go. To, I still have a nine to five. So I spent my time. Yeah, yeah. I spent my time, um, you know, trying to connect with the family, trying to connect with my kids and trying to focus on the music. Uh, like I said, I have a nine to five. I'm very big on that. So there's no way I could have time to do all that. Every I record my own self, you know what I'm saying? So I had to give up something. But when I have that time, I could get back to it. I'll get back to it. But it's not harming me, though. It, it actually, you know, it, it's good for the mental health because you don't want to put too much pressure on yourself and then and, and everything else crashes, you know? You're exactly right. The less stress, the better, especially with last year, because you work at a Brooklyn hospital, which is interesting with COVID all going on. You took some time off. I had my son. Um, I had to take um, PFL, which is paid family leave and spent some more time. So when he was born on uh, February 24th, I had to take time off. And by the time I was ready to go back to work, COVID happened, which was in March. So I had to take more time because I had to take more time, 10 weeks. And then, you know, it was, it was a blessing at the same time because I get to spend more time with the kids. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't a blessing for everybody else, um, which is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's yeah. unfortunate, but, you know, um, a lot of things that happen is not always going to be good for you or good for somebody else and bad for somebody, you know what I'm saying? So we just got to pray and stay positive throughout the time. Um, you know, and we, we pulling through it. We are, we are pulling through it. And what was your mind, just what was going through your mind creatively in music? Because you said that you could write six, seven songs a day. What was going through your mind then when all this negative things were going on? I was at the, I was at my best state of mind because I had a lot more time. Um, during the COVID, I felt like the world stopped. It was a bad thing, but at the same time, if you if you try to be positive, it was good too. Um, there's always a good and bad in between a, a bad situation. You just gotta find ways to to make it worth that feeling. Like, okay, I, I could benefit from that. So, because of COVID, again, I spent a lot more time with my family. I'm able to connect with my kids. I'm able to connect and, and I'm able to have the time to give my mama a call to see how she's doing. Throughout the week, I couldn't do it because I was working all the time. So I feel like with COVID, what happened is a lot of people could have took advantage to learn something new, to, to perfect their craft, to do a lot of things. But some people, their state of mind wasn't there either. So I get it. Um, for the strong one that was able to do it, cool. Um, so it was my best state to be honest with you because I had to be positive my kids needed me and because of that I was able to have time to connect with my fans I used to do give cash app giveaway every Friday buy them lunch buy them dinner I would pick a couple people to pay their bills so I was fortunate enough to to do that so you know in a positive way 
it did affect a lot of people, but it did not affect me. But because it did not affect me, I was able to give back to the people it was affecting. So it works out, you know? Why is it so important to give back in your mind as an artist? Because, because out of all these artists out here, I'm sure that they do a lot for charity. It's not really spoken of too much, but you make it a point to address that. I'm here to give back to the people. I mean, I feel like um, giving back is a blessing, man. Uh, what people don't know is that you can't have it all. It could be gone tomorrow. And sometimes it could be gone tomorrow. You didn't even get a chance to enjoy it yourself or uh, bless somebody else. So it's like when you have, bless as much as you can, not just yourself, because more blessings will come for you and to you. Um, I felt like with me, where I came from, it was hard and I've seen it. So it's not only hard in Haiti, it's hard everywhere. It's hard in America. And in the greatest country in the world, they say, right? Mm -hmm. um, I won't let that go over my head that there are people that's going through it. So I've came from a place where a lot of people go through it. And I was fortunate enough because I had a great father that was busting his butt to do what he had to do to give to me. And what I did, and I give it back to the people that I didn't have. So I, st I still took that method when I came out of here that I'm, I'm fortunate enough to leave that place to come here to better myself. But when I came here to better myself, there are people that are still going through it. So what I do is if I have, I'm going to help anywhere I'm at. It doesn't matter if it's wherever, Haiti, Africa, wherever, Jamaica, wherever you call it. If I'm there, I can help. I'm going to help as long as I have it. And if I have it, I give my last because God blesses me different. And I could only speak for myself because when I give, I sleep great at night. I'm at peace. And, and become, because I'm at peace, my mind is free and open. I'm able to focus on the bigger things that could bring me more, that could, give, that could help me give more to people. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's also how you was raised. It's not, a, it's not a gift. It's not a gift. You got to have it in your heart to understand that whatever you have, not everybody can have it. And can you be selfish a little bit? I don't believe in that, you know, because I could have a hundred dollars. You could have a hundred dollars. I'm still giving you from my hundred dollars only because your hundred dollars may already have planned. And that means you don't have a hundred dollars because you already made plan. But with me, I didn't, I, I didn't make plan with mine. So I'm willing to give it to you and give some of it to you, even though I knew you would have a hundred dollars. That's my method. That's my focus. That's my mindset because I'm not going to look at what you have. To, to, to make a decision, should I give to you? Because I don't know what's going on with you, what's going on in your life, in your mind. You probably already made plans for that money. So that's, that's how I do my giveaway. And it's God bless you for that, especially with your job when, you, when working at the hospital and helping people out. Because I don't think people who are even at the hospital, you, you never even, just speaking on experience from family members, our family members, from my perspective, how they treated the people at the hospital were, were terrible. They were like, get out of my room. Don't wait on me. And I don't think we really reflect and look back on, you know, that you, you guys that work at the hospitals really help people out and you help people get through their days. And we don't see that sometimes because you may be going in there to stick a needle in them, but just to keep their blood flowing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, people go to the hospital to, to get well. Mm -hmm. They don't just come for fun because trust me, nobody wants to be in the hospital. No, no. So when you have your family member um, goes and get admitted to a hospital, you would think they are in good hands and you would want them to be in good hands. So, you know, like we have it rough too because we have to deal with family members that are aggravated and angry and 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 we're not in a position to feel what they feel because it's not our family member that's on that hospital bed so we have to be as as respectful respectful as possible and take it in and you know and, and we go from there and then if we have to release the stress when we get home we do that and sometimes we don't release it when we get home because we have family to our home that we have to cater to. We just throw it out the window and we do our job with, lo with loving. Mm 
You know what I'm saying? It's all about loving. Because a hospital job is not about money, man. You got to love people, man. Because there's, a, there's people that come in there that's terrible. That's like in bad shape. But their mouth is, is so harsh that you leave them right there and don't do nothing for them. But that's, they're here for a reason. And yeah. we got this job for a reason. You know what I'm saying? To take care of people. You know? I always said that just based on different people in this country, especially, you know, white males. I always say that white males tend to be selfish. Do you think that COVID put things into perspective for a lot of people in which Americans are more caring for each other? Yes, I, I believe that because a lot of people yes. um, has been going, you know, yes. I feel like COVID allowed people to, yes. to find themselves, okay? It, 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 it's a reset button. It's a re-evaluation. You get what I'm saying? You got to evaluate yourself because I kid you not, one of your family might be dying of COVID right now. And doesn't matter if you're white or black. That person is in a hospital bed next to a black person dying along with them. Sorry to say it like that, but it's the truth. But it's true. But this thing allows you to evaluate yourself and life, you know? So because of that, a lot of people have been very connected and that's the, that I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of people has been disconnected to angry because they lost a love, a loved one. So, you know, this COVID thing, it breaks people and it brings people together at the same time. And when I say people together, not, not strangers, because we were unable to connect with strangers, but with your family that you, you and it, it gives you a different mindset to, 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 to be, to be loving. And once you, because remember, it starts from home, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have the love at home or the way your parents was raised you or raised you, when you come outside, you're not going to show that love. So all the black, all the white, all the racism going on, that's what it is. It's, it's, the, it's what you get from home, man. What you learn from home, you bring it outside because if your grandparents, your parents was had hatred in their heart, that's how they're going to raise your your parents and your parents going to raise you like that. So when COVID happened, a lot of people, I'm pretty sure, happened to connect with each other and start to look at things in life different. Like, damn, why am I like this? Your grand? I think you're right. My, my grandparents raised you like that? That's what he's, that's what Papa said? Damn, Papa wasn't right. You get what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. And then once you start, when you start connecting those type of feelings, you start to see life different. So it starts with you at your house. And then when you come outside, you're going to just look at people with that same love. And that's, I can't speak for everybody, but that's how I, that's how I would hope mm -hmm. it happened or happening. But I'm pretty sure 75% of it happened that way. Because we don't, we, we, we angels, right? We born with no hatred in our blood and our system. So in order for us to build that type of hatred towards other people, our own loved ones is because is being entertained in the house. You get what I'm saying? It all well, sometimes comes from outside home. too. It comes from home. It comes from home, and then you learn that because that's where you stay the most of the time. At your house with your family, you're learning a lot. So when you come outside, you become that person, you become the things you learn. And this is what it left you with. Mm -hmm. You know? You're exactly right. I think it was a perfect explanation. And being from Haiti, when you first came here, you believe that America is the greatest country and that it's propped up to be, as everyone says. I believe that. I feel like there's a lot of opportunities, man. There's a lot of chances. It's just you just got to take advantage of those opportunities and chances that's given to you. Um, the world, life will, life will try you. You know, no matter who you are, you could be a millionaire, a billionaire, life going to try you. You just got to be ready when life try you to, to stay 10 toes down and take care of it, handle it in a proper way where it won't get you messed up down the line. So there are opportunities for a lot of us. You just got to find it. You just got to connect with people. Uh, just find it, man. You just got to work hard. If you believe in yourself, people will believe in you. If you don't show no interest of that, you work it, you believe in yourself, people won't, people will feel the same way, you know? So 
you know, I, I believe, you know, this is a place, yeah, there's a lot of unbelievable, unbelievable things going on, but I'm not saying that you have to put your head down and deal with it, but find ways to, to become better, find ways to um, be part of the solution, not the problem. You know what I'm saying? Because it turns out like that most of the time. You know? Big things plan. I know you probably have an upcoming album that you're working on, some big things. Man, listen, man, I've recorded so much, so many songs. I could give you at least three to four albums right now. Wow. Right now. You're ready. You're ready. I'm ready. I can give you three to four albums right now, if not five. And I'm not even at my peak yet. I haven't even really been full. Listen, I got two kids. I still have another five. I come home, still record music, right? <laughs> so imagine when I don't work a nine to five and music become my main priority, number one. Around right that time, of course, I'm, my kids gonna be my priority, but you know what I mean? Like, well, I don't have to go to a nine to five. And for the people watching or listening, a nine to five is nothing wrong with it. I'm a whole artist who signed. I own a hundred percent of my masters. I still wake up early in the morning, go to work, come home, uh, uh, hang with my kids and record music. It's all about the love and what you have for it, man. Um, don't stop your blessings only because you're trying to create this narrative for people that don't really care about you, really. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because outside of your music, when your music is done, they want more from you. So, you know what I'm saying? If you got to keep your 9 to 5 to promote your music, do it, man. I'm really big on 9 to 5. Man, I'm a, I work hard. I believe in working hard. Um, so, yeah, man. And I wanted to tap on that because having a nine to five, it discipline you. I don't like being late. I don't, I, you will invite me somewhere, you will never see me late. I'll be there an hour early. Now, how does that happen? Because you don't want to show up to these people's jobs late all the time. You get written up or fired. You don't want to talk to people a certain way. You got to have some type of respect. You're going to get written up or fired. So that's, that's what I got from this being going to work a nine to five. I, I, it helped me discipline myself. Help me respect people more and see things differently because I deal with patience. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not for everybody. So, you know, it is what it is. If that's not for you, whatever you do, be great at it. You feel me? But don't don't ever be ashamed of what you do. If it helps you feed your family, just push hard and be careful. That's all. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you dropped your very first project, I believe, which was a new Haiti. Yes. What's this new Haiti going to be like from the next album that you got planned? Is You said that you could probably drop three or four mm. albums. I, I actually dropped Trust the Process. Mm -hmm. The new Haiti was dropped way back. Trust, Trust the, the Process was after. Was after the new Haiti. That's right. Yep. Trust the, Trust the Process is one of my biggest projects that I've ever And you had recorded. Sage the Gemini on it. Yes, I have Sage the Gemini on it. Shout out to Sage the Gemini, man. This kid, um, amazing guy. He showed me a lot of love. He respect my talent. He appreciate my talent. Um, he think I'm really dope, and I think he's very talented himself. So that's another artist that looks up to me, and he done one plaques on plaques and sold millions. I haven't even hit that type of level yet for him to acknowledge me. On that level, I appreciated him for him not to look down on me and what his ac accomplishment has been. You know, he didn't look down on me. He showed me love. He kept it going. And, and I appreciate that. We don't get a lot of artists like that that show love based on their level of accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I appreciated him for that. So, you know, like I said, I my biggest project I dropped was Trust the Process. That's right. Um, I was in a dark place. I was in a place where no one would want to be. Uh, for the people that's listening, if you have suicidal thoughts, if you're thinking of hurting yourself, be strong, seek for help, talk to your friends. And for the friends that's out there, if you have friends and you love them, check up on them. Don't just hit them up just to see where the hype is at, whatever, what, what's popping, what's, what's, you know, anything that has to do with, just check up on them. Yo, did you eat? You good? It doesn't make you soft. Yo, bro, you good? Did you eat? You straight? Nah, I didn't eat. Yo, you good? You have money? Nah, I right. 
What you want to eat? I'm going to buy for you. Check up on your friends, man. You know what I'm saying? Check up on your family. Check up on your loved ones. You know what I mean? Even on your enemy that you still talk to. You feel me? Because um, I was in a place where I was suicidal. And I got out of it. And I still fight it to this day. But I'm finding ways to be strong. I'm finding ways to do things that will make me happy. You know, like I said, man, I was in a dark place. Nobody knew. Nobody check up on me on my... But I had to fight to come out of it. But not everybody was strong enough to fight to come out of it. So check up on your friends, man. Check up on your loved ones. Check up on your, you know what I'm saying, to make sure they're good. You, Not just for the hype, not just for fun. Just, yo, you good, you ate, whatever. You need something. You know what I mean? Even if you can't give it to them, ball away from somebody and give it to them. Because I'm telling you, you're changing their lives like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm but, sorry um, to hear that, but I'm glad that that you you got through it and you have things that you you can cope your mind with and you know you got you have a family you have a music career ahead of you and you you busied yourself in helping other people and I think you know it's yeah. kind of a movie it's a wonderful life you need to be there because you serve a great purpose. Yep. Um, you know, I had to be strong, man, because Kai. Okay, relax. I had, I had, okay, daddy. Okay, okay, go ahead, go ahead, okay. Okay, go sit down, go sit down. My, my, I'm gonna get my body. Yeah, um, so, you know, um, I had to find ways, man. Um, I tried it, I tried to up it. I tried to take my own life and I still got to deal with it every day. You know what I'm saying? As I speak to you, I'm getting emotional about it because I mean, I'm not in a, I'm not in a good place right now. Mentally, I'm trying to be, I'm going through a lot of issues or a lot of family problems, you know, but I got to be strong for my kids. I got to be strong for everybody that's out there that love me. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I know what you mean, man. You know, you're my prayers, man. You're my prayers, man. We got a lot of fans out there. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, you you got a you got a lot of fans out there that are really enjoying your music, man. You do. Thank you for everything that you give the music and. You know, we can't wait to see what you bring forth in the future. You know, you got a lot of things planned. You got three or four albums that are going to be dropping here. You're going to be getting those plaques like Says the Gemini had and much more. I appreciate that. No doubt. Well, Haiti, is there anything else you'd love to let the audience know here tonight? Anything else? Just be strong. Be positive. Be strong and be positive. That's right. We heard it first from Lil And tell them where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter and everywhere. We want everyone listening to connect with you. Hey, everybody listening. I'm sorry. I got a little emotional. Um, y'all can follow me at The Real Lil Haiti on Instagram. Uh, y'all can look me up on Spotify, Lil Haiti. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, any, any, just Lil Haiti. That's right. Yeah. Tune into the Big Zoe EP. The run it up. Is out right now. Run it up. Show love. Do what y'all do, man. I appreciate all the support. Just so you know, uh, y'all support this is why I go hard every day, and then y'all help me feed my family. So I give back, right back. No doubt. You know? No doubt. Yeah, mate, run it up. Run it up. Give him a follow. I want to thank you for coming on the show. And when you're ready to drop that new album, you know you're always welcome back to come back on the show. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Appreciate you guys for having me. Um, they didn't really get emotional about this topic, but you know, it's, I'm trying, man. I'm yeah, no, I, I totally understand, man. You know, yeah. Always in my prayers. We're looking forward to the new music. I want you to take care. Enjoy the rest of your night, man. Thank you for everything you do. You too.